The last data type I'm going to talk about here uh, is the data frame. Uh, the data frame is a key data type used in R, uh, and it's used to store tabular data. So, of course, tabular data make up a lot of what we use in statistics. Of course, not all types of data are tabular, uh, but because so much data becomes a tabular form, data frames are very important in R. Um, so data frames are basically represented as a special type of list, where every element of that list has the same length. Right? So you can think of each column of the data frame as an element of the list. And of course, in order to be a table, every column has to have the same length. However, each column doesn't have to be the same type. So the first column could be numbers, the second column could be a factor, the third column could be integers, uh, the fourth column could be logicals. It doesn't matter what the different types are. Um, so unlike matrices, um, where, which have to store the same type of object in every single element of the matrix. Data frames can store uh, objects of different classes. Um, and so data frames also have some special attributes. First, the first special attribute is called the row name. So every row of a data frame has a name. Uh, and this can be useful for kind of annotating the data. So for example, each uh, row re might represent a subject enrolled in a study. And then the row names would be the subject ID, for example. Um, However, sometimes the row names are not interesting, and, and, and often you'll just use row names of 1, 2, 3, etc. Um, data frames can be created by calling, uh, most often calling the read.table, the read.csv function, uh, and we'll get into that a little bit when I talk about reading data into R. Um, and you can also create um, a matrix from a data frame by calling the data.matrix function. Now you can't, um, if you have a data frame, that has many different types of objects. And then if you coerce that into a matrix, it's going to force so, uh, each object to be coerced so that they're all the same. So you may get something that's not exactly expected. So data frames can be created uh, besides using read.table or read.csv. You can use the data.frame function. Um, and here I've created a very simple data frame where the first, element, the first column is, called, is the foo variable and the second column is the bar variable. Uh, the foo variable is an integer sequence from 1 to 4, and the bar variable is a logical vector with two trues and two falses. So when I auto print the data frame out, uh, you'll see the it prints out the two columns. Uh, and here the row names, uh, since I didn't specify any special row names, it uh, just defaults to 1, 2, 3, 4 because there's four rows. Um, and then when I call the nrow function on x, I see that there's four rows, and the ncall function shows me that there's two rows.